Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Above the Bar podcast, a show about a middle-aged father, current events, and how these things affect my everyday life. Sweet. There it goes. Alrighty, folks, welcome to another episode of the Above the Bar podcast. It's your host, Sean. Today, we have with us special guest, Joe Nub. Hello. Joe, Joe how long do you figure we... So, let me put it this way. Joe finishes the trifecta of FBI, Fanboys Inc. He was the last, the last Beatle. I was the fifth Beatle. Right. right. Yeah, definitely. I, I was the fifth Beatle. Joe Joe was an original. Joe was the uh, Ringo star. I could live with that. Ringo's still alive. Yeah, I mean, we're going with Joe. Joe was Ringo because of the fact that uh, Joe handled all. You know, he was involved in all the. Uh, he had all the other t- that were that were missing there. How, I'm something here. He, he had all the what? I have, uh, Joe. Ringo was like the talented one that nobody wanted to accept was talented. <laughs> We're gonna say Tal, who, if you've listened back to old episodes, Tal was was uh, Rick, who we did the music episode with, and DW, the Pod Father. He was mm. kind of like we we I guess we could say he embodied both. Uh, doggone! Uh, oh God, why am I having a brain for it? John, John, uh, John, and uh, John Paul George. Why am I having a brain fart on the Beatles? John Paul, John Paul. No, wait. Just, <laughs> no, you got me throwing it. You got Paul. Yeah. John Ringo. It, I'm fucking can't remember the other. George Harrison. George Harrison. Yes, George. So like he kind of in, embodies like two. Yeah. And then like Tal would be George Harrison. Was, <laughs> he would he would be like like Rick was George Harrison. He was off doing his own shit. Right. right. Like when. He was like the first one to decide it was a great idea to like be to go over to India and, and all that shit. Like I could see him doing that. Right. Very easily. But yeah. but Joe is like he is my toy guy. Like when the when the wife goes out and is like, look, I found toys for Lucas. And what are these? And they're they're superheroes. I'm sending him messages like, dude, right. yeah. is this some real shit I've got here? Like, is this legit? Like, right. And he's sitting there going, Sean, that's from the 1992 set from Marvel. Check the feed on it. Uh, it, it this, is that. this, 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 this. It, yeah. it, you, you've got nothing, nothing Current, there worth talking about. Market value, $3. Yeah. yeah right. Ba- basically, that's what it is. Look, my grandson is throwing it up today. Hi, Papa. So right. my, my grandson, his, his other grandmother, Gigi. But I today... Hey. I have to tell you, so so I met someone today, and man, he was kind of abrasive to talk to, and I and I told him uh, about you, and I said, you know, do you know Joe O'Neill from the Glens Falls area? He said, Joe, do you do you know a Tom Scullo? Scullo? S K S K O T O L. Let me see. I'm probably spelling Tom's name wrong, and he's gonna watch this and be like, bro, you Tom um, Scolo? Scolo, that's it. No, doesn't sound familiar. Not at all. You don't know him. Show me a picture of this guy. Um, I can't because I don't know what the hell I did with my phone. Are you friends with him on Facebook? I'm we're, going. We're, we're friends on Facebook. You know him. You hung out in his basement. Uh, the story was that he had all these toys and all these oh. he, all these he men. Yeah. Tim Sokol. Tim Sokol. Why did Why did I say Tom Scullo? Tim Sokol. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. having a yeah. No, Tim very well. Yeah, I don't know why I said Tom Wait, Scola. Where did you where did you run into Tim Sokol? So Tim and I belong to uh the same AA meetings and um we dri- no, I'm kidding. So Tim <laughs> Tim and I uh belong to the same networking groups. So uh-huh. we were on this networking meeting and he does all this stuff with game shows. He's a big game show fan. He he started his own business this year, God bless him. Because obviously nobody saw COVID coming. No, with his job, all. yeah. So wish wish him the best. Yeah, but he he loved game shows. He had the idea for years to to do something on his own. So all right, you guys network in the same groups together. And we just were talking today, and uh, 
he he was like, yeah, so my family owned this, that, and the other thing up in the Queensbury area. Yep. Um, if you guys don't know where Queensbury is, it's one of these cities that pops up on all these lists of like the greatest places to retire, the greatest places to live. And um, this is all because there's a wall of snow that surrounds it that no one can get into because it's it's up in the frozen tundras of New York. That's true. But, uh, yeah, he was just telling me about, like, how his family had all this stuff up there. Yep. And I said, uh, I know a few guys up there. I said, do you know Joe O'Neill? And he goes, Joe. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's normally how most of us respond to Joe. And, yeah. and then he told me that, like, I want to hear your, do you have a version of the He-Man story? Because he told me the He-Man toy story. So, yeah, I mean, you know, Tim and I, we've known each other since since high school. Uh, and a couple of years ago, I, I think we were still doing the podcast at the time. Uh, you know, I don't know. He came into the restaurant, my family's restaurant that we had up in Lake George and we got talking and, um, you know, it was just, he, he said, I think he said that he still had his childhood toys. And I was like, yo, let me come over and check him out. I got to see this collection. He's got a nice childhood collection. You know, he's got a big Rubbermaid tote just packed to the brim with great 80s toys. So I kind of went through everything and, you know, he showed me his comics and his big Captain America <laughs> fan. Um, and I can't remember if I tried to make him an offer then to buy all of his stuff or it was sort of like laying the groundwork. <laughs> uh, and then over time, I think we ended up doing a trade, some Star Wars figures. That's you know, what he, he said, yeah. He wanted a, an original... You know, uh, uh, you know, first 21 Star Wars figures, 1978, 79, Snaggletooth. <laughs> and he had a uh, Power of the Force Barada figure I was looking for. So we worked out that trade. So I think you get him the Snaggletooth. Maybe I gave him one other figure. I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, that was that was that story. He he said that, as you, that he had all the accessories for his He-Men. Mm -hmm. And you were like... Don't worry about it, man. I got this. I'm going to sit down and do this for you. And you sat down with all the He-Men figures oh, and put on. all the accessories with them. But he said you were smelling them. Like, smell that. You got to smell the vintage. Like, like see, that's... So, so, folks, the reason I had to have Joe on, we're after Christmas. Christmas is over with. By this point, we're still finding slivers of wrapping paper all over the house. The packaging is destroyed for the toys. Everything is missing. But we all, and I was having this conversation with some guys at work, and which kind of keyed this idea to me. We all have toys that bring back memories, whether it was a, a toy that we wish we still had, a toy we wish we would have got, or, or maybe you still have something. Like I know... Guys like Joe and I that are big collectors, we love our toys. We're toy fans. Mm -hmm. We still have shit that like people are like, "Oh man, did you buy that? You know, did you just buy that?" And it, nope, there it is, Castle Grayskull. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Now, is that your original Castle Grayskull? Because I try. You sent me those pictures, wow. and I was trying to pull them up, but Streamyard wouldn't let me bring them in. Okay, but, but it wouldn't. And I'm, I hope a buddy of mine from work, Brian, jumps on. We're talking about this the other day, bro. He's got two of the original that were his growing up mm -hmm. tra transformers. Um, what was the, the construct, the constructor bots turned into devastator. He's got two original devastators. Nice. Very cool. And he has his original 1984 Optimus prime with the box. Nice. That's a very nice piece. I'm Is like, bro, is it complete? He it? says he says it's complete. I right. was like, bro, I can remember having those and how awesome they were. And I made a mention to him. I was like, the great, the greatest thing about the uh, Optimus Prime for me. Yeah. Was, do you remember the little car in the back? Yeah, roller. Yeah. That only was ever in one episode. Yeah, it was in one episode. And I remember being a kid and seeing that, and be like, it's in there. This is the greatest. <laughs> like it was like because before I was like. This thing ain't in the fucking show. This is bullshit. Like right. I'm like eight years old and like talking shit on Transformers. Like you, you bitches put some shit in here. This ain't real. Which is so funny because at eight years old, like you're an authority on cartoons. 
you totally, you know, you're like, no, this is this is absolutely wrong. They got it completely wrong. What are they thinking? But that's terrific, man. Transformers toys, I love them. Uh, you know, fucking through the years, the Comic Depot, um, our, our home away from home for many, many, many years at five one four Broadway in Saratoga Springs to meet all your fanboy needs, or at least it was. I don't even know if that address is correct, but now it's a goddamn beef jerky store. Oh, let's, is it really? Let's not get into that. But got so many Transformers at the Comic Depot. Got so many vintage toys, for that matter, at the Comic Depot. Um, but yeah, Optimus Prime. Never had him as a kid. Actually, that's one I'll say. That was one that I wanted, but I never had. Optimus, you know, like the, the kid down the street had it. You know, I think my older cousin in Pennsylvania had it growing up. And I was just like, like, like it's Optimus Prime. Right. You, you can boil the Transformers cartoon. If you're only going to have one Transformer figure, that's the one to have. That or Megatron. Right. Now, see, that was the one I never had. And I didn't realize that if you buy a newer Megatron that's like a replica of the original, yeah. you know he's got an orange front on him? Oh, yeah. So I bought uh, – so Takara, which is the original Japanese maker of Transformers, okay. and then Hasbro. Years ago, they started a line called the Masterpiece Series, and they were – Hold on, Joe. I can't hear you. I don't know if the audio is good or oh. not. My my core just what happened? My, 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 my core. Can you still hear me? Yeah, you got a little scratchy for okay, a second. Give me one Get second. Back. I gotta mess with my audio for a second because I lost you. Yeah, bud. Uh, audio. Let me switch this real quick. <clears throat> Crayola. I hear the Decepticons. All right, talk for a minute, Joe. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hey there. Yeah, guy. I can hear you. Something. My headphones went out on me. All right, you can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. My headphones went out on me. I'm having some kind of issues with my mixer every time, like, the the slightest hit on the uh, cord, and it just goes out. I got um, some very sensitive. It's like me. It's very sensitive. <laughs> we just so, need warm, warm milk and, and some bed. That's it. Just can Warm I just, milk and a nap. It's, it's all about the nap. The nap yeah. makes everything better. Oh, God, yeah. So go on with your story. I apologize. Oh, yeah, yeah, No, no worries. So we're talking about Megatron and new releases. Like, if you're going to get a Megatron in gun mode these days, there's going to be an orange tip. Now, granted, Hasbro, they're not going to make a Megatron in gun mode to release in the United States. However, yeah. Katara, who is, you know, uh, the, the, the original, you know, uh, creators of, of Transformers, at least before it was imported over here, um... They made a masterpiece version of Megatron, which was, I don't know, what do we want to say, four, 14 inches, 12 inches? This was yeah. back in 2007. Beautiful figure, die-cast metal parts. It actually transformed into a gun, but, of course, to be able to sell it and import it here to stores like, uh, you know, e-tailers like BigBadToyStore.com, they would they would put the orange tip in there. Uh -huh. But you never see Hasbro sell Megatron, you know, they'll never, Hasbro will never make a Megatron that transforms into a gun. Mm. Or is the pity. See. Which, which shame. Uh, He's always wife, a tank nowadays. Now my wife's going and grabbing some of the, uh, the back stash and bringing it out right now. Back Because I don't, because I don't have like all my, all the stuff I have out toys wise that yeah. you can see are all my 12 inch GI Joes. I have a massive collection of just Marine 12 inch GI Joes. Like 60s, 70s stuff? I don't have any of the 60s and 70s stuff. I have a lot of the early 2000 re releases right. and, yeah. and 90s. I have window boxes with like Iwo Jima, the nice. uh, Marsoc Marine. I actually have all four of the boxers white guy, white guy with red hair, white guy with brown hair, and black guy. Mm -hmm. um, I've got, um, I actually have a couple of Vietnam ones, one that is a Vietnam grenade thrower and okay. uh, one that's like a tunnel rat. I've got the gung ho, uh, 12 inch. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I've, but they're all like to do that. I'm going to walk around the house with the computer in my hand. Right. But what I've actually gotten that, and we're going to get it into the, the wishes here in a minute. So this was actually kind of a wish. So my aunt Marlene, and you've seen this set. My aunt Marlene was a big Star Wars fan. Oh, you showed me this at the Comic Depot. At, 
And she was a big Star Wars fan, and I was never allowed to play with these. They were only allowed to be kind of set up yep. and left alone. Let's see if I can get this thing open. I, my my son is a Tyler. Do you remember Tyler, my older son? Yeah. He He's attempting. So uh, this one, dangerous as it is to open, can we? Yeah. I don't know if I, I can even. So this actually. Turn it still, on the fence and we'll watch every figure and wait. Yeah, just fall through. But <laughs> do you see what's still in there is the cardboard. Nice. Yeah. The original okay. cardboard. And all the figures in this one, she actually put them where they belong with the little trademark nameplate. Yep. With, yep. Very cool with the name label. Uh, and like I have the R2D2 with the sensor scope. Nice. Uh, T Boo, ATST driver. Like it's all in nice. there. Um, now, my do, job. You have, do you have the R2D2 with the pop up lightsaber? I do not. Do you have? Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. They made it in 1985 as one of the last figures released for the Star Wars line before Kenner discontinued it. I used to have it as a kid. I foolishly sold it in 2006 because I thought, you know, like, I, I, I'm okay with getting rid of my child Star Wars toys because I was focused so much on vintage G.I. Joe. Oh, very nice, dude. But the uh, pop-up R2 Saber now goes for, you know, the pop-up R2-D2 with the lightsaber. What is it, like 500 bucks these days? Is he up to six now? Four fifty. Oh, nice! An original card. Very nice. Cut bubble card back. That is a that looks to be in great shape. How many cards you got, fella? This is actually the only one that's in there. I'll take. Um, you'll take. Look, Joe. I know. It. I know already. We could spend this entire next hour of you and I attempting to negotiate <laughs> yeah. what the what we could have for this because i've seen the drool marks right that you, that you get into didn't you uh i thought you i thought darren was gonna buy that back in the day so it's funny so uh we were just having so when i was on with dw we were actually having this conversation yeah and i said i said yeah you know darren looked at it and i don't know if you remember this and darren looked at it and darren was a, i'm gonna tell you folks if you ever were in comic depot darren was one of the most shrewd negotiators I had seen in a long time. I thought I was good. Yeah. But but Darren was like, oh, man, this is a nice set and everything. But there's scotch tape on here to hold them in. I'm going to have to sit down and clean all these. Ah, oh, man, you know, I'm just I, I'm not going to be able to give you that much. You know, a couple yeah. dollars a figure. And I'm looking at it going, this is complete sets. Like this is Return of the Jedi. Um, we're look, look at these nice, you know, oh, yep. original, you know, I'm trying to figure out how this camera, cause it is reverse. I used to have some of them just sold them a couple of years ago too. You know, what does something like that even go for? Honestly, something like that. You're not going to get a ton, you know, maybe like 10 bucks, 15 bucks, maybe 1980. They're, they're cool. 1983. No, they're this is an eraser. Yep. What's the other one? A pencil topper? Yeah, it's like a it's like a pencil uh sharpener. Oh nice. Very so cool. Got, the pencil sharpener. I think this is a uh pencil this camera's getting me. Pencil yeah. sharpener also. Very cool. So, so you've got all these. We do have Jabba. I'm not I don't have all the pieces out, but complete Jabba. Nice. Very He's good. Complete. So so you know, these were when I would and I'll, this was probably one of my my wants as a kid, only yeah. because my aunt had the whole thing, and I'm like, "You have this, and you had yeah." His head, my the 17 year old just just realized that this has been sitting there, and that when you move his tail, his head moves. <laughs> he's like, he's sitting next to me, going, "That's so cool." Yeah. <laughs> nice, I'll take that one too. Great, right? See, uh, Joe's Joe's going to take the whole collection off. We'll, man. we'll have it offline. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, because we can start it here. And maybe somebody else will jump in. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, but, we'll but now, my and you bring it up, GI Joe. I love GI Joes. Uh, I love like the three and three quarters. My favorite toy line as a kid. Still my favorite. It's it's it is the best eighties toy line. Absolutely. No matter what. Yep. 
so much articulation. The Star yep. Wars stuff was fun, but was they were oh, five points. Yep. And what uh, were the GI Joes like? Twelve or something like that. Right. I mean, you had ball jointed heads. You know, ball jointed arms, swivel arms, bend hands turn, ankles turn, waist, knees, hips, head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees, toes, and, knees and toes. Um, plus, you had all the accessories. And then you had the amazingly gorgeous card arts. The packaging right. is the icing on the cake. And it's un uncomparable. Yeah, there's there's never been it's anything. So that was always my go-to. And I had a lot of G.I. Joe. I had a lot of duplicate. I probably had like five bazookas. Nice. To do. And it was always like. And I don't know if because he was just like the cheap unknown guy, but like everybody would be like, oh, here's a bazooka. Right. <laughs> here, honey, I got you another bazooka. You're like, we're getting some Cobra troopers. I need troop builders over here. See, Actually, I got, a, I, got a, I got my bag of G.I. Joe fit. One of my bags of G.I. Joe figures right here. We'll do a one for one. So we'll just start. What do we got? Uh, go the other way. Nice. We're now, going to be hitter first. Snake, that, uh, Storm Shadow. Snake. Snake and now Snake Eyes in there with you with him, or is it just uh Storm Shadow? Well, in that in that case, it's just Snake Eyes, but I got oh, Jesus Christ, it's just Storm Shadow, but Storm I got Shadow. Storm somewhere. Uh Firefly will go, we'll go big first. Firefly lose nice. complete. Um mail in Duke. And you can tell he's mail in, it's a little tough to see, but the uh you can see the American flag sticker on the shoulder. That's the indicator. Uh, that he was the mail-in version. Oh, actually, I recently picked up somebody's childhood collection and found Admiral Keelhaul from the USS Flag in there. Now you bring it up. Now. That's one. That, 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 that was my wish. Yeah. But I want to know what kid, and a buddy of mine from the Marine Corps, Steve Ciciola, just said he still has his collection. I'm curious, what kid out there Got the flag. That son of a bitch was, isn't it the largest toy ever produced? Seven feet long. Uh, I only knew there was one kid in my neighborhood who had it. Uh, his name was Thad Fileski. The story, <laughs> the neighborhood story was that this kid, this kid was like a year or two older than me. So when you're a kid, being a year or two older, there's a, that's a oh, world. Oh, yeah, it was monstrous. You might as well be 30 years old. So, <laughs> You know, it was always intimidating to go over to this guy's house. And the story that I had heard was that, like, he and his dad were driving on the Northway, and the, they lost control of the car. The car goes in the river, in the Hudson River, and the kid saves his dad's life. And then the dad just agrees, like, he's just going to buy him every single G.I. Joe toy. <laughs> that was that was the neighborhood story. That was the urban oh, myth. The I urban up, legend. I grew up in suburbia, so that was the suburban myth. But yeah, oh, he, had the, uh, he had the flag. I think I only saw it once in his basement. And uh, yeah. You had to pay admission? Did you have to pay admission to go see it? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. Look, you can see it, kid, but it's going to cost you a quarter. Like, I don't. Yeah. And, and don't touch it. BMX, you know, next uh, for every weekend for the next month or something like that. Who knows? So now I had I had the, the headquarters. Okay. I had, I had the uh, F-14. I had the Apache. Um, I had a couple of the the Cobra River crafts. Yep. I had. Been. I had the personnel carrier, which was the greatest. The, oh, the uh, UPC. Yep, I had that, and then I I also had the uh, hovercraft that uh, you had the button on the back, and it would. Yep, the depth charges. Oh yeah, yeah, and the fans. That that the was fans. another one. I wish I had it. It was big. It was cool. Actually, just picked one of those up like six months ago in a lot, but it was you know incomplete. My buddy, who he's a big garage sailor, that's actually where I got one of these Castle Gray skulls from. I think this one down here. Um, so I picked it up from him. Bought a huge lot of toys from him, but he fucking smokes in his house and he smoked like a goddamn chimney. I'm like ah, motherfucker. So, so it I smoke like tobacco. It still does. I scrubbed the hell out of it. I put it in a box with like. You know, open boxes of of Arm and Hammer. <laughs> it still has not absorbed the scent. I think I'm going to have to leave it outside all winter and let the the cool fresh air just breeze through the damn thing. Try to take it away. Right? Yeah. 
But yeah, the what the uh, the hovercraft, the whale, beautiful toy, gorgeous. Do you remember the names of these things, Joe? Yeah. I was tell I'm telling you, I was telling a buddy of mine today. I was like, look, Joe's the guy that like you hold up an an amigo, and he's like, oh. That's from the 1976 collection from Amigo. If you check his feed, as long as it says blah, 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 it was made in this place. Uh, oh, he's go ahead and he's missing his cod piece right now. Right. Like, like Joe's my guy. I call when I go like, I don't know what this shit is. Joe, what is this? So, you know, the funny thing is, is that, you know, as as I kind of transitioned out of um, Fanboy Zinc, you know, because my family's restaurant, we were you know, I was getting more involved with that and my daughter was getting a little bit older and I was spending, you know, I, was, I had her more often and I just didn't have the time to do the podcast as much. But then around that same time, uh, I met a local group of guys, uh, the Empire State Star Wars Collectors Club, kind of based around Albany. But really, we have members down in Long Island, New York City, wow. you know, Poughkeepsie, Kingston area, way out in Syracuse, Rochester, Buffalo. And so we will travel all over to each other's houses all over the States. And I thought I was a big deal. Like I thought I knew my shit with the toy collecting community. I'm now getting the chance or I have gotten the chance to meet the guys who were writing the articles and the books that I was reading oh, to wow. absorb all my knowledge. And now all of a sudden I'm like actually getting to see these one of a kind pieces. Like, you're, you know, we're talking Star Wars. So, you know, I've gotten to see, like, the original wax sculpt of, like, the Jabba the Hutt figure and shit. So it's it's just this incredible opportunity that has been, you know, given to me. And I'm so thankful for it. And I certainly appreciate your compliment of, you know, me, you know, knowing my shit. But, man, if you met some of these other guys that I met, they put my put myself to shame. They'll, and if they'll, take, that, they'll take that tauntaun of yours and be like, yeah, so the... The guy who sculpted this, he grew up in Pittsburgh and, you know, his dad worked for. Isn't that crazy? You know, the like, like they've, got they, they've got it all figured out and they're like, oh, no, you, you, you need more. You don't have this. Now, I, Speaking of that, let me see. That looks like unbroken harnesses on that thing. I'll take that one as well. We'll talk. Yeah, no. oh, oh, is that a big deal that like the harness is being unbroken on these? Yeah, I guess the harnesses are always, they're very fragile. Look, I'm telling you right now, this is from my aunt, my aunt Marlene's collection. I know, I remember seeing that. <laughs> and these have, you know, when some people are like, well, mine were gently played with, this, that, or the other. Right, those no, were like, never played with. These were packages that were opened and yep. put on shelves. And I'm really surprised that she never had the packaging. Ah, that's, that's a shame. I like, wish she threw it out. I just want to sit down now and just like. Well, I think I think you should just put the tauntaun in front of your camera. Hang on, I'll, I'll get one. I'll get one for me. All right, you get one, and we could actually let the tauntaun do the interview. Somebody is watching this and going, "Murphy's a big dork and an ass." What the hell is going on here? And I'll get my hat. As two as two grown men allow their toys to talk to each other. That's right. So, how are things going? Up run calls. What's up, buddy? What's, What's up, Bob? Oh man. What's this going is on, great. Man? This is great visual, but when the podcast goes up, people are gonna be like, What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this nonsense? This is just some guy talking out the side of his face. I can tell. Man, I tell you, man, working for the Empire is tough, but at least I got health insurance. Oh, we're the rebels. We're looking for union work. This is bullshit. <laughs> So here is an example of one of the ones that I wish I had as a kid. You know, the uh, Empire Strikes Back 1980 Ad-At by Kenner Toys. This so that's an original. This is an original. And I just completed it the other day. So you'll well, see these tin guns here, these two guns here. There's a little battery cover here. Uh, this was not mine, but this was my buddy Kevin's as a kid. His mom sold their childhood home a few years ago. So he's getting, you know, all his old shit. He gave me his old Millennium Falcon, his old Adat. Oh, you know, Millennium Falcon. Well loved, but I'm like, dude, keep it for your son. He's like, nah, he doesn't care about it. I was like, all right, man. So I have spent the last few years putting this beauty together. So very happy to say, give me a kiss. Very happy to say that I finally completed the, <laughs> the Adat. Now, now, you said the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. How? How badly as a kid 
did you wish that the chessboard was real? Oh my god, the, the chessboard was the coolest thing. Like the like chess. The and then somebody recently, so I never so I have a guy that I, I work with, Tom. Tom is a big like he's into like he knew who Thal was or Thorn, the the guy they oh, keep Thorne. talking about. Yeah. But yeah, that's the guy. He knew all this stuff. I never knew that the hole in the front of the Millennium Falcon was because it was supposed to be pushing freight like a tugboat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had no idea. I'm like, ain't this some bullshit here? I had 0.0, .0 clue that that's what that thing was for. And yep. he's like, yeah, bro, that's that's what that – I'm like, all right, well, I thought I knew some shit. That's what Man, I feel like with – Shit. I, bro, I, that's what I feel like with so much of this. I'm like, yeah, no, I am absolutely clueless with all of this. Here's another example of uh, things that my Aunt Marlene was into. Have you ever seen one of them? Oh, scooch that over a little, C-3PO? No, other way, other way. Right. No kidding. Sa sassy pants, C-3PO. He has nipples and all. I love it. How much you I want for that one? Put that one aside. Put that in my pile. Put it in my pile. In my pile. Like, Real it's so quick, funny. I show you. This is the, uh, so I just showed you the vintage childhood uh, Millennium Falcon. This is Hasbro's 2008 Millennium Falcon toy that they that they came out with. Uh, over two feet long, Good light God. sounds. Let's see if I can get some dialogue in here. Hang on, or some some sound effects here. But it's an absolute beautiful, beautiful toy. Were you the one that grabbed it from the ceiling? Oh, look at that! Thing. Lights, lights in the cockpit. And although this particular piece is missing, the the holographic chest board. It does actually open up. Might be tough to see, but there is. Hey, yeah, you can't really see in my basement here. Yeah, maybe a little. But there is an actual chessboard in there that you can uh, have, you know, C3PO and R2D2 playing, uh, playing chess. So, this is something to, to think about here, folks. I'm broadcasting from my basement. And Joe's broadcasting from his basement right. while our wives are upstairs <laughs> and, and all of our toys are in the basement because no matter how much they love us, they still think you can keep your crap in the basement That's right. and keep it out of my living room. You're an embarrassment. Go in the basement, <laughs> you cave dweller. You, you, you what the fuck is wrong with you that you're that you're you put that shit right right. next to the christmas tree right and we're going out once a year why did you buy that because i really like it I, I, I know. I think it's cool. now and what was your toy joe like what was the one that was was it the, we were talking about this beforehand yeah is it the one that i think it or no maybe it was during the show was it the uh optimus prime was that your like the, i the one that you never got what was the joe the joe so, no actually, you never so got the one that I never got. Hang on, let me put this beast down. That's what she said. Hey -oh. So the one that I always wanted and I never got was the it was 1982 Star Wars Sears exclusive micro collection Millennium Falcon toy. So you you just saw the size of those Falcons. Right. This one was you know probably like this big. Um, based on the Empire Strikes Back, so you had a, a you know a Luke, a Lando, Chewbacca. It was the only set in the micro series that had C three PO and R two D two. And these figures are like little, you know, one inch uh, die cast metal. And so my mom and I were in the store. We see the Millennium Falcon. I was like, Oh, mom, 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 I want it, I want it. You know, she's like, Nope, we're not getting it. You know, holidays are coming up. Um, you know, maybe Santa Claus will bring it for you. So she never got it for me. I never saw it again. Fast forward to the mid to late 90s. We're at King of Prussia Mall in King of Prussia. Yeah, yeah no, that's where it is. Yep. So huge fucking mall. I think there was a Starlog store. And that? so you remember Starlog Magazine? No. Starlog Magazine, like sci-fi no. stuff, horror stuff. Oh, you're kidding. You don't, nope. you don't. Know, yes, you know Starlog Magazine. I don't know it. I swear to you, I'm totally, I don't know this magazine. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So for 
for your dutiful listeners out there. So Starlog Magazine was, you know, it was a magazine that focused on interviewing and, and you know, um, showcasing, uh, you know, horror films, sci-fi films, fantasy films like Star Wars. And so, yeah, I believe they had a store as well. So we go in, we see the micro Millennium Falcon toy in the box. Now, granted, this is like, I don't know, 96, 97, 98. I think the thing had like a $300 price tag on it. And I said to my mom, like, mom, there's the micro, you know, like, you know, come on, let's, you know, you kind of blocked me the last time. Let's hook it up. ball on this one, lady. Yeah. Uh, and so she go ahead and it up. like, ha, 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 let's go. Let's go. We're leaving. So I never got it then, but I did get it in the early 2000s. And it was an amazing piece. I loved it. It was awesome. It was everything now, that I wanted to be and more. Now, in the early 2000s, would that put you back? I think probably about the same. About three think, bills, yeah, like a couple hundred bucks. Wow! See, that's you know, guys that like kept the boxes. I was never that kid. Like I, I was the kid that was going to buzz saw through that box to get to that toy. And and as, and as far as like stickers were concerned, right? And as far as like stickers were concerned, these stickers are bullshit. I ain't putting these damn things on. I want to play with this thing. Right, I, right. Like I, I have remember, no, I have no time for stickers. I need to no. play. This yep. is bu- this is bullshit, and and see, I was a big Indiana Jones fan. Ah, nice. So, a lot of times, mine ended up on like Indiana Jones level of adventures as like a big giant team. I don't have time for you guys to be fighting because for whatever reason, I ended up with like twenty GI Joes and five Cobras. This shit doesn't work out. Right. You guys are an exploration team looking for the secret treasures. We're going for with it this way. That's cool. I like the idea. I was I was always that kid because I was like. The math doesn't like I was. I was able to look at it and go. The math doesn't work out here. This is you're never going to win this battle. This is just right. bullshit. I don't <laughs> have enough of these other ones. So uh, now, what was the one for you though that like this was the one? Like when I got this for Christmas, mm-hmm. this was like right. it didn't get any better. Peak, peak. So that would have been 1987. Uh, you know the years. Yeah, the GI Joe Space Shuttle Defiance. You had the Defiant. I did. I was very blessed because, you know, also understand my father. Do you remember the toy store, Toys for Joy? No, but I know. I remember when he worked at FYE. Yeah, 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 that's true. But yeah, because you're from like Maryland or something, right? I'm from Baltimore. That's right. That explains that stupid, ridiculous accent of yours. (laughs) (laughs) You ain't the only one that says it. Look, you know how many times up here, you know how many times up here people are like, so you're from like the South, right? And I'm like, well, south of the Mason Dixon. Like Georgia or Alabama, I'm like, no, you whack ass. I'm from right. Baltimore. They're like, that's the South. And you're like, no, it's not the no, South. No, it's geography not. was not your friend, was it? Right, right. <laughs> and I and I kid because you know your your accent. It does. It reminds me exactly of my family in Philly. You got that? Oh, yeah. It's the same. It's the same exact accent. Mid Atlantic. So I bust your balls when I say that with love. So with anyway, love. um. So locally, locally in upstate New York, there was a chain of department stores that had a, a kind of an offshoot toy store. It was called the Joy Store. The offshoot was Toys for Joy. And so when, when my family and I moved here in 1985, it was so my dad could work for the company. And so my dad worked for a toy store. Life was good when you're 10 oh, years old. So, yeah, one year, you know, wake up Christmas morning, there's the G.I. Joe Space Shuttle Defiant, and it was... Fucking tits, bro. It was just, it was me. I mean, it's everything that you would expect it to be. Bro, how big was that sucker? Fucking massive. Big, bro. Wicked big. I tell you, the box, I don't know. I'm 6'1. Box is probably like this tall, at least five feet tall. So it was almost as big as the flag. No, 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 no. No. Um, Because flag was seven feet long. There's no beating that. It's the large. I know it's the largest toy ever produced. Yeah, I mean it really is. You know, this thing. I don't know. Maybe it was like two feet tall, two feet wide, kind of thing. I mean, it was like just a giant brick. Um, but you know, then the gantry doors would open up, and you could crank a wheel in the back, and then the thing would would you know the the shuttle part, the gantry, whatever, would kind of lift, and then the shuttles you could launch them into the air. There was two shuttles. You know, there was the main shuttle, the booster, and then you had the little space shuttle that could detach from it. Uh, you could connect them in all sorts of ways and 
kind of create like a space station, uh, you know, came with uh, an astronaut and then a driver for the, the actual crawler, the earth crawler machine. It was awesome. It was so cool. I remember on Christmas night, you know, this 1987. So I'm 10, my sister's 15. Uh, she's dating boys at that time. So her boyfriend came over to pick her up and they're about to go out. She's still getting ready. My dad is sitting there like he's on, he's down on one knee. He's explaining to her boyfriend, like the realistic application, the real world application of this toy. Like, well, and then this, uh, you know, this shuttle here, it's based on such and such. And it's like, my that's just my dad. God bless him. Well, see, I love your dad. I've sat at the bar and talked hey, with yeah, your dad. You go. Yeah, you met him. I, yeah. I, I, I have sat at the bar and I have spoke with your dad. And he's he, a talker. He is a talker. That's, you know, what makes him so amazing. And it, it was funny because when you were sent, folks, I have all these pictures of Joe. I'm going to try to, if he's okay with it, I might put him on our uh, oh, yeah. Instagram page because we have our Instagram so everybody can see Joe and his toys. Uh, there was one of your pictures we have to talk about here in a minute, but sure. uh, Joe's dad was an FYE guy retired out of there. Great restaurant. Uh, I didn't realize the one was gone. I didn't know that you guys didn't have the place up in Queensbury anymore. Yeah. Till, till recently. Uh, that'll tell you how long it had been since I'd been up there. Like Herb and I were talking he was like, Oh, what's it been a few months? I said, bro, we haven't seen each other since the restaurant. When I came up here and, and uh, I had brought him, uh, what was it? Thing uh, two and one. Yeah. It was thing two and ones. Yeah. I was like, bro, I brought you those thing two and ones. He was like, that was a been that long? Film cinema in, in Glens Falls. So that was four years ago. Yeah. Yep. No shit. I and remember he, the night that you dropped those off too. Yeah. And he was like, has it been that long? I was like, yeah, bro. I, I don't come up this way. It's just not right. You're for just, me. Nothing, nothing's to bring you up this way. So yeah, just yeah. you guys. You know, unless you guys are like, hey, we're doing something. I got no reason to come up there. But he was like, yeah, man, uh, it's been that. I was like, yeah, been that long. So yeah. my I, my probably and I, it's a combo of my best and still have. Now, I'll give you your, your still have. Like, do you have anything of like, like, I know you got a lot of your toys. Mm. Um, my buddy Steve still has his. I know you sell collections, buy collections. You kind of like well, go that, back and forth. Yeah. Like I have, you know, in, in 2005, I sold kind of the majority of my childhood G.I. Joe collection because that stuff was mostly like the late 80s, early 90s stuff. And what I was right. focused on at that time, it was like, I want to get every G.I. Joe toy from 82 to 86, you know, the, the prime cartoon years. So I sold off the childhood collection to fuel another part. Then in 2006, I sold off the childhood Star Wars to again, fuel this G.I. Joe obsession at the time. Uh, let's see, 2007, I sold my childhood Transformers. Probably same reason, just trying to fuel the G.I. Joe collection. Then in 2009, I sold the G.I. Joe collection. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I still have some. I remember you selling the G.I. Joe collection. Yeah. I remember that. I made good money on that, too, because I sold it right before the first movie came out. And I said, you know what? There's no better time to sell it now, because if this thing is a dud then popularity is going to drop for G.I. Joe. But if this thing is a success, then the popularity, you know, it's going to skyrocket in price. But, hey, at least I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll be able to make the best money that I can right now. Right. You'll, you'll make you'll make out in the deal. Yeah. Way. Yep. Yeah. Now, so I'm good with that sale. And then, and honestly, the, the sales of G.I. Joe, maybe they dropped a little bit over the couple of years, but G.I. Joe prices have been on the rise for the last few years. No doubt. And it's I actually deep six. Just kidding. Nobody I, cares. About I, them. I love deep six. Cause I had the little watercraft thing. Right. I, again, yep. That's it. I had these things. Now my son ain't going to listen to me. If I ask him, I actually have a Japanese three and three quarter in the box for what GI Joe. No shit. Where is it? Let me hold on. Hold on. Like it, entertain, en entertain the folks for a moment. All right. Very entertain, good. Be entertaining. All right, very good. So, folks, we are going to go over some of Joe Nub's picks or Joe Nub's purchases of 2020. As we wind down the year, one of the most recent purchases we made was the Star Wars Return of the Jedi Jabba the Hutt Dungeon. Uh, this is the Klaatu Nick 2 88 version, as opposed to the later version, which features Power of the Force figures, Amana Man, EV-99, and Barada. 
so even though this is not the most popular version, it's still pretty darn cool. Plus, uh, still in the box, complete tape. Wait, where is it? Tape, no. Ta tape is still sealed on one side. So I like that. I like when boxes have the tape still sealed on one side. I love you. Okay. That wasn't weird. Right. Uh, that wasn't should I keep entertaining, or are you gonna you gonna show us? Oh, nice. So this is a 40th anniversary. What? GI Joe Japanese. Uh, hmm. Look at the top there, Joe. Can you tell? 40th anniversary. Very cool. So what figures it's, in there? It's never been opened. Mm -hmm. Like it's still got the uh, like pull tab to yep. open it. Still intact. I have I have no idea because I don't speak Japanese. <laughs> I, I I couldn't I couldn't tell you. Let's see. Go. This okay. way. Yeah, yeah. I want to see who's in there. So this is what you could have got in that box. Oh, very cool. Very but cool, I dude. I couldn't tell you on God's green earth what's in here because it's all in Japanese. Yep. Uh, and it's just so funny to me because it's a company, Takara. Yep. Takara, whatever it is. It's but, Takara or Takara. Yeah, Taco Bell. I think that's the name of the company. Taco right. Bell put those out. And that's so, that's who did this. So Takara, I mean, they're they're a huge Japanese company. Without them, we would not have Transformers. First off, um, so yeah, you're you're in good company if you've got some Takara product there. They're, they're Hasbro's counterpart in the uh, in the East. My my <laughs> wife like must have just put Lucas down. And and if everybody wants to send Joe a congratulations, Joe's a year younger than me, mm -hmm. and and Joe. Joe just had twins. Can you tell? Oh, look, just leave Wampa. it right where it was. Can you tell what that is, Joe? Well, it's Wampa. Don't be. Don't fucking play games with me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he saw the hands. He goes, "It's a Wampa. Don't fucking play games with me, bro." <laughs> Very nice. That, that's April's favorite, only because What's she up, says April? it looks. It looks like me. Joe says, "Hi, April." Hi, Joe. She said, "Hi, Joe." Nice. Yep. Um. Oh, what the hell is that? Oh my god. It's just well, I, now, hold on a sec now give me Toy. that there so this i didn't even know was in there um it's this is still so you say what that is that's not rolling papers joe just so you know that's not you rolling have a problem papers. we're gonna have to have it this is actually an intervention this is an intervention princess nice. leia nice but it, but it came inside of this Ooh. and what there's actually a stand and it actually says this actually says on it Leia card stand support the carte Leia but I don't know where my aunt would have got this on the bottom it actually says say trademark 1996 yeah applause Lucasfilm limited applause China yeah. yep that's what I thought yeah it looks like so applause is a company they made a lot of like uh you know PVC figures and when you held up the lay, it kind of looked like one of those. So, yeah, nice, cool little piece. Probably not worth, you know, probably not all that valuable. But if it's part of your aunt's awesome collection, then, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, like this, I, I like I said, as a kid, this collection was was everything. So I got to give you the story. Now, this is a, a family lore and legend, this story. <laughs> and, and the only reason I say that is, if anybody from back home in Baltimore, any of my family that knew my grandfather, uh -huh. uh, my grandfather was a no nonsense kind of guy. He didn't play games. Uh, he was the kind of guy, though, that would sit and you could come in the house with my uncles. And my my uncle Mike is eight years older than me. So he was raised more. I was like a brother because he's only right. eight years older than me. Yep. Uh, my uncle John, he's I think he was 10 years older than me, maybe nine. So my, you have to understand my grandfather was also things like, do you know what a numbers man is? Like running numbers kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. My, my grandfather was the numbers man in Baltimore city. Okay. Right on. Like, like some people are like bullshit. Uh, no, like, yeah. Right. Like, trust me on all that's holy. I can remember stories of like guys coming in to get their numbers from my grandfather. And I was a little guy. I was like five, six years old. And yep. he always had a knot of cash. Like, like that and, and guys would be like what's your name son and i'd be like sean and they'd be like john and i'd be like sean and about the second time they said john he would look at him and go the boy said sean didn't you hear him and that was the end of the conversation at that point right. he had love and hate tattooed on his knuckles he had what love and hate tattooed on his knuckles and he looked go. like royal and he looked like roy orbison 
that says it all. So give you kind of a background on my grandfather. And my grandmother was a no nonsense kind of woman. Also, we actually used to call her GI Judy because she would bark orders to everyone. (laughs) So one Christmas, and I remember this, I was probably about four or five years old. And I remember watching all the classic shows and they would get the very classic toys. Oh, I want the police officer set. I want the fire engine. I want this out of the other. So I remember asking my grandfather for a red fire engine. Mm -hmm. Now that was my memory of it. The story continues on over the years of my mother and everybody else who was involved with my grandfather and my grandmother's conversation. My grandfather lost his leg to diabetes. So Mm -hmm. he actually had a hospital bed in the living room and still ran numbers. Understand this. Right. So the story was that my grandmother or my grand, I told my grandfather this, I'm the oldest grandchild, the whole nine yards. And my grandmother, my grandfather yelled into the kitchen, Judy, Judy. She came in and goes, what John? Go get that boy a red fire engine. John, I've, I've already bought him all of his Christmas presents. I'm not buying anything else. Judy, go buy that boy a red fire engine. Supposedly, he, she made a comment one more time about how uh, she wasn't going to go. And all I can tell you. Oh, is, nice. there it is, my original. Well done. Tonka. See, it's still got the Tonka sticker on it. I love it. And I don't have, there was a ladder and a hose for the side of it. Yeah. All these different things. It still goes up and down, bro. I play, remember all those GI Joes and everything I was talking about? They all played on this. That's awesome, man. They all worked on this. This might've got you over the wall of the headquarters. (laughs) Um, This might've got you onto a chair that was, got you onto the table where the headquarters was at. All those toys, but this one piece right here was like, the paint's chipping off. My wife said to me, aren't you going to clean it? I said, I'll be damned if I'm going to clean this thing. That's it the does not get That's yeah. it. Yeah, I love it. I mean, this this was my one piece that has survived over all the years that I'm like, n- no. Like, if it's the one piece, like if somebody said, well, what's the one thing that you would run back in item-wise to go get? I'm going to go get this fire engine because right. I've just had it. I, I've had it since I was four or five. I love it, man. That's amazing. That's amazing. Shoot, so, that, that, that's a that's a tall order to fill there, my friends. I can't beat that. Story. It's that got a story. story. That is such a good story. I can't beat that one. But I will sh- I that, will that, share something with you because especially because you've been showing off, you know, the Star Wars stuff. You got me in a Star Warsy kind of a Star Warsy mood, bro. So this is. Let's see. Not there. Not there. Well, Joe's getting his stuff together. If anybody's got any of their toys, anybody who's watching right now, any of your toys that you had or wish you would have had, please send me a message. I can see it. I'll post it up on here. If you have toys currently that you're like, hey, man, I know I got this one. What's it worth? I can't tell you that Joe's going to know the exact price, but he's going to be able to give us at least a better understanding of what's out there. And in a minute after he shows me what he's got here, He's going to give us a little hint to find out what stuff is worth. That's right. So first off, I'm not going to open this thing. Um, because the pieces will just, everything will go flying out. But this inside of here, this is one of the things I would run back in to grab if the house was on fire. This is the uh, the official collector display case by Hasbro. And it's got all, what was it got? All 12 um, oh, wow. Of the straight arm G.I. Joe's, Cobra, the troop, everybody on here, everybody's file card, everybody's complete. Uh, this is one of my favorites. And then this one, this is the other thing. I would have I would have G.I. Joe like in suitcases running. Running. <laughs> running with the suitcase. I have my Star Wars Star Wars case in the other. This oh, I remember that case. I picked this up from John's place, Excellent Adventures, back in 2013. And the plastic isn't broken. What's that? The plastic isn't broken. What do you mean the plastic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not broken. Yeah, like, remember, they always would like rip and right. see like, the, the, the foamy underneath of it. Yep, always broken. But all the figures. Oh, if I could do this without fucking dropping everybody, uh, that would just be more entertaining. Though, remember, that's yeah, right. You know, We're going visual for audio. audio. Everybody's complete. Everybody's got their weapons. All original. You know, the figures are in really nice shape. 
you know, Luke uh, Skywalker. Is that a retractable uh, lightsaber? With his original lightsaber. Not the double. I wish it was double telescoping because then he'd be worth a lot more. But I'm not going to complain. You know, he's got his original lightsaber. Um, so John from Excellent Adventures got this Star Wars collection in back in 2013. And so he called me, or maybe I just happened to be in the shop. Original Princess Leia, nice and clean. <laughs> it, for, for those of you that listen to the podcast, Joe is currently sniffing toys. I just want you to know that. That's right. It, let me let me let me sniff louder for the for the audio. That was uh, that was a fake. <laughs> but no, John got this collection in. This was before Star Wars got big again. You know, 2015 Force Awakens, Star Wars blew back up. Everybody started collecting again. So I was very thankful to have gotten these at a very reasonable price before prices have gotten to the insane place that they are now. So if the house was on fire, these are two cases that I would grab first. Got, got to go back and get them. Now here's, a, you know, because we're getting ready to wrap this up here in a minute. Yeah. What is the one toy that like if you got it, like as a toy set, you were like, oh, I, I appreciate that, but you yeah. know this isn't this. Because I know I have one in my mind that I wouldn't have cared as a kid, but I can kind of see somebody who was more into it. They'd have been like, oh, you got me these? Right. You know these aren't really these. That's not these. Right, right, right. What, so I'm trying you... to, I think there was a kid. I remember that, yeah, there was a kid down the street. He was actually one of my like closest buddies, neighborhood friends as a kid. You know, we got in all sorts of trouble together. but he was always more outdoor activities, hiking. He played soccer, sports, whereas I was definitely more indoors playing toys and, and, you know, stuff like that. And so for a birthday one year, he got me, he got me like a knockoff transformer figure. Uh, it was a, it was a, a, a knockoff line called converters. And it was one of those things where I was like, Oh, thanks. But meanwhile, in my head, I'm like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this bullshit? Gas station garbage? Yeah. I still have this the gun. I actually found the gun a couple months ago. Uh, See, so now, I, you know what came to mind me was GoBots. GoBots, right. Yep. Like, well, GoBots Go was... GoBots was at least a legitimate brand. You know, this converters thing was definitely just sort of like a... If, if you know, you had Transformers, Transformers... And you had GoBots, then then there was converters like way down here at the bottom. <laughs> I've never even heard of converters. Right, exactly, exactly. So so let's give everybody a little advice, Joe. Like so, if they don't have access to a, to a Joe Nub, they don't have their own Joe Nub. As right. I'm lucky enough to have my own Joe Nub. And there's you needed. To, there's got to be a better way to say that one. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, come you on. have access to your own Joe Nub. I have access to my own Joe Nub. If you, <laughs> If, if you didn't have access to your own Joe Nub and, and you're running across, you're in mom's basement, you're cleaning out things for her as you're sending her to the home, you know, what what to, what would be the way to figure out what the value of some of this stuff that you're finding is? Right. Great question. So there's a couple different ways you can go. Uh, eBay is your best friend. You know, if you have an idea of what you got, if you're like, oh, yeah, these are He-Man figures, but I don't know exactly who is who. Start with just checking on eBay. Just type in He-Man or Masters of the Universe. You're going to get a lot of stuff coming up. Um, you know, look at the look for the copyright information that's printed on an action figure. It might give you a date. It might give you the company's name, Mattel, Hasbro, etc. So start typing those into either eBay searches or even Google searches. Also on eBay, if you're looking for value, don't just look at what people are listing things for. Because people are going to say, like, hey, I've got, I, I don't know, like, I've got something. Like the Castle Grayskull. Yeah, not not even Castle Grayskull. They're like, I have some old beat up Star Wars figure from 1999. And I think it's worth 50 bucks when really it's like this thing's worth like $2, if that. So don't go by what people are listing it for. Always look at the sold listings. And to find that, I think on the left-hand side of your eBay page, Kind of scroll a little bit down the page, and then eventually you'll see a little box where you can check for sold listings. There you're going to get the most accurate uh, information possible. Another place is if you're really you know, looking to dig in on some information about toys, join some Facebook toy collecting groups. 
you know, go on Facebook, type in action figures, vintage action figures, things like that. You'll find some groups pop up. Uh, there's a lot of people on there that are quick and eager to help. So take a couple of nice, clear photos, get some good lighting, make sure everything is kind of spread out and you can see it. You know, you know we're talking about toys again. Like this is toys we're talking about. We're not talking about your spread, right? Like we don't need the lighting. So just, oh you know, and then you kick back and make sure your shade. Wait, no, what? Um, yeah, and then uh, you know, just say, "Hey, With can I get some help here?" And so, you'd be surprised; people will, will be eager to help you out. So April loves to buy Lucas toys. Like she'll find these ones at like yard sales, like you do. Yeah. Uh, here, hit. She just brought me this, and she had a question for you. Uh, how do we put this back to make this back into oh, what it's supposed nice, to be? Oh, nice, dude. Oh, I love that figure. So that is this a 1998 Transformers Beast Wars Transmetal. That is Optimus Primal. Oh, yeah. You're going to need the instructions from now on. Oh, wait a second. Joe, let me, let me – hold on. I have to switch the audio for a minute, Joe, because you're on my headset again. So yeah. I, want you to, I want you to actually say that so that – because I, I want April to hear what you just said because right. you're just – fucking looking at it and you're not holding it and you're not looking anything up right now and that's so wild to me. so say it again joe what is this so that is a 1998 transformers transmetal optimus primal action figure um i mean turn them around let me see them a little bit okay <clears throat> looks to be missing some missiles there's some kind of wrist guards that go around. Looks like you might have some of them, or that's just the wings. So you're missing the wrist guards. You're missing his gun. Um, I don't see any missiles there. But as far as directions, I will tell you uh, that thing was a bit of a beast to transform. <laughs> no pun intended. Anyways. Um, oh, yeah. oh. Google the instructions if you're looking out how to learn how to transform that guy. But nice pickup. Nice pickup for a yard sale find. There how much you pay for it? Yes, I April paid for it. What'd you pay for that? Two dollars, she said. For fucking steel, She's talking bro. down to two dollars. Nice. What? It's a steal. She said they wanted 15 and she talked them down to two. She actually showed him her cleavage, is what she did. That's nice. Um, when, whenever we go yard sailing, I actually ensure that my wife wears the most low cut thing that she possibly can right, or an right. evening gown. We actually like the yard sale while she I wears an evening gown. gown. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, large slit up the leg. Um, right. That, that's sensible cut. when you're yard sailing. Right. Um, <laughs> that's just what we go with um, open toe of some form. And uh, while she's talking to them, I'm like, can we get it any cheaper? Right. Prefer to drop the toys every so often, whatever's necessary. I'm just saying. <laughs> You do what you got to do. Well, if the method, if it works. <laughs> I know somebody's listening. Is like, the fuck is he? What? He's pimping his wife out for toys at a yard sale? Uh, Not yes, even good yes, toys. Like broken, no. busted up, hand-me-down yard sale toys. <laughs> Not even brand new in the box oh, bullshit. This is broken down shit. <laughs> 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 April deserves better. At least bring her to like FAO Schwartz and have her show off the oh. good. Well, FAO Schwartz is closed, but what are you going to do? Well, you can get those at Macy's. Macy's carries FAO Schwartz. Uh, Target carries FAO Schwartz as well. That's like the new thing. Like that. And I can, you know, we're a little bit over if you got time for a couple more minutes. Right. Uh, I remember when FAO Schwartz went from this place I had never heard of mm -hmm. to the movie Big, like. All oh, right, change the game with that place. Yep. yep. And I got to go into, I took the kids uh, years and years and years ago to the Times Square Toys R Us before it closed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Have you, had you ever been in that place? Uh, I've been there a couple of times. And actually, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about FAO Shorts as well, or, or just New York City. So, touching back on my father and his career with the Joy Store and the Toys for Joy era uh you know stores up here in the north country so every every year my family and i he would take us down to new york city we would have a whole you know extravaganza we would go and see radio city music hall christmas show we'd see the rockettes see the christmas tree in, in rockefeller plaza we would go to fao schwartz and what i did not realize until i was older is the reason we were down there he was going to toy fair every year and for those who don't know toy fair is the <laughs> annual <laughs> event held down in New York City 
and it's where all of the vendor like a vendor event Hasbro, Mattel, Remco, whatever you know, whatever toy lines are out there, they will come and they present their items, and then the buyers come in and say, "Okay, I'll take you know fifty thousand units of this GI Joe or whatever." And I'm like, "Are you fucking kidding?" You know, like I'll say this to my dad now, like, "Are you fucking? You were at fucking Toy Fair. You had a ten year old kid. And <laughs> you never even told me that you were going there." And then no, he was no. like, so at Toy Fair, they would hand out brochures. You know, like here's our here's what we're gonna present in 1988. You know, these fucking Toy Fair magazines are now worth, I don't know, it depends on what year you get, but usually they're over like a hundred bucks, 60, 70 bucks, a hundred bucks. And I'm like, you never even like hung on to any of those for me. Come on, Dad, what are you doing? You're killing me. He's so, a business, he was a businessman. He was like a bull well, and that, he was smart. And and he my, yeah. even said he's like, I had my toy buyer. Mike Sullivan, he's like, he had all those magazines. He's like, I wasn't thinking about that stuff. Um, so it's just kind of a funny story, and I like to oh, bust, that's... bust, bust oh, my. Because your dad's great. I I love your dad. Your yeah. dad's so great. You're so, you know what? Your whole family. I've met just. I think I like the person. I don't know if I met your mom. I definitely met your sister. Yeah, she would have uh, been there. You know, at that point, probably when you came up, my mom probably either went home or you know went to pick my daughter up because I was still working or something. But yeah, like I don't know if I've ever met my mom, but you know, the you know besides this, the you know if you ever have a dying restaurant in the Albany or uh, Glens Falls area, call the O'Neills. That's that's your saving grace. They're like bar we'll restaurants. We'll we'll final bullet in that thing. Oh, you're full of shit. You're sick. <laughs> Your sister saved West Mountain. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. We know better. Now. Brutal. I had to get out, man. I had to get out of that business. Well, you know, I, I actually, I was just telling a story yesterday to a guy I work with who worked in bars as, from like Aspen and stuff like that. You know, kind of guy that's like, yeah, I was with John Denver doing Coke kind of thing. Right. You know, that that era. And he was, we were talking about it. And I remember my parents owned a liquor store and a bar growing up as a kid in back in, uh, this was in Essex. I grew up in Dundalk and I remember as I was getting ready to get out of the Marine Corps or thinking about it, I should say yeah. I said to my dad, why don't we open a bar together? And the old man goes, no, I'm like, why? He goes, so I want to spend all day worrying about who's stealing from me. Everyone's right. stealing from you every day. Yeah. Everyone's stealing from you. I'm like, what do you mean? And he proceeded to tell me stories and I'm like, got it. So I'm not yep. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, I, you understand that one. Oh yeah, so Joe. We're gonna get ready to wrap this thing up here. Cool. What is what's what's some final words of wisdom you got for everybody? Keep collecting, keep hunting, get out there. There's still, you know, the nice thing is that, you know, here we are, forty years after the '80s, and there's still lots of great toys to be found out there. If you just keep searching, you never know what you're gonna find. Ask questions. You know, let people know that you're a toy collector because you'll never know, like. Oh yeah, my neighbor down the street. He said he had his childhood such and such, or his, you know, kids' childhood such and such, and then you might find some some real treasures in there. So there you go, folks. Keep keep hunting. You'll find them. They're out there. Joe, once again, I appreciate you, brother. And look, everyone, be sure to push your stool in. <laughs>